Hi, welcome to Julius Bar. Today we're gonna mix a Sakura Martini in my recipe. So the Sakura Martini is a recipe originally by Kenta Goto of uh, Bar Goto or Restaurant Goto in uh, New York. That recipe features uh, sake, gin and maraschino but I changed it a bit and I made it mine. So let's get down to it. So let's start in our mixing glass with some grenadine syrup because to me it all makes sense if we are going for sakura, cherry trees blossom filling, to use a teaspoon of grenadine syrup. This is my homemade stuff made from pomegranate syrup, white sugar and a small amount of cocktail the brown sugar from Okinawa just to add a little bit more complexity. Then we go with 10 milliliters of uh, Carpano Dry. This also differs from the original recipe. I just film the dry vermouth. It's essential in a martini. We make it a bit more martini-like in this way, in my opinion. Then we go with the gin. Today I'm going to use this Japanese gin called Sakurao. It has a sakura in the name. Despite having sakura in the name though, it's a dry gin with a hint of citrus. I think it's one of the best deal in Japanese gins. It comes at 47%, so it's not skimpy on the alcohol, and it's fairly competent in flavor. And, at least in Japan, it's definitely reasonably priced. I did an event a few months ago at a corporation and uh, I used this gin to propose them drinks because it's Japanese but it's affordable so everybody at the event could find it in a conveni. The mini markets that are uh, in Japan all over the place, like 7-Eleven stuff. Anyway, then we go on to our last ingredient which is this which uh, the name should be Omachi Mai no Sato made by Sakura Muromachi Shuzu. I hope I said that right. It's a sake that 15% ABV. It's fairly dry. It's from Okayama. It's a nice place. It's uh, near the inland sea of Japan in front of Shikoku and it's the land of Momotaro, the mythical Hercules-like figure of Japanese folklore and uh, 60 milliliters of this and we are done. Let's get some ice and let's give this a stir I'm filming this on March 16 and Sakura are about to bloom early in Tokyo. It's 2023 by the way, if you see this in the future. I went around uh, my favorite Shakujigawa nearby, which is a great alternative comparing to the Meguro River or uh, Ueno Park where it's gonna be super crowded during sakura season but the sakura were not quite in full bloom yet the problem with sakura is they are extremely fleeting and unpredictable in fact tomorrow should be raining and cold so many sakura might already fall down But I'm going to give you some extra tip for visiting Japan at the end of the video. So stay tuned if you're interested in more info about Japan and Sakura. And let's single strain this one in our cocktail glass. As you can see as nice, slightly pink color, thanks to the grenadine. And then we're gonna finish this 
with a sakura tsukemono. So these are sakura flowers that have been treated with salt so that they can be preserved all the year. You could use a real sakura blossom, like I have here one, but they will work just for like a week, a year. This is Tsukemono, if you can find them, which I don't know if there are gonna be any available outside of Japan. This lasts all the time, so you can use them. And on top of that, because they are salty, they're gonna give our cocktail the same feeling that uh, an olive or a bit of dirty martini, you know, like when you make uh, the martini with the brine of the olives, something like that. But these are so salty that I'm actually gonna pour a tiny drop of a sake on them and I'm gonna rinse them a tiny bit before putting them in my cocktail. They are really a bit too salty and then I'm gonna select one and I'm gonna drop it like that. And there you go, a Sakura Martini, my version. Cheers. This is nice. As I tested before with the Sake Martini, Sake keeps a martini dry. Even though you dilute it a lot, Sake keeps the dryness. The dry vermouth adds a layer of complexity and the grenadine make it so that it's not so dry, gives more like a sakura feeling, and it balances out the salt when you reach the end. The salt, by putting in a sakura flower, gets mostly to the bottom of the glass. So the last sip is gonna be a bit spicy with a lot of salt, but not today because I gave these uh, flowers a bit of a rinse. I don't know if you can see, but it's basically all salt there at the bottom of this glass. But this drink is good. It's a variation on the sake martini, but I think it's a good one. If you can find the sakura flower, it's a great display. It's really pretty, in my opinion. If you cannot find the sakura flowers, then you might need to resort to use an olive. An olive is not gonna look as good, green. Maybe a black olive is gonna look slightly better but hey do whatever you need to do to make yourself a good drink of course your choice of sake and gin are gonna greatly influence the structure of the cocktail in this case i went with two relatively simple dry sake and gin but they work well it still has a lot of uh, fruity and flower flavors which uh, tastes good in my opinion so if you enjoyed the video, please like, subscribe, comment down below, share with anybody you like and don't like, make yourself some drink with a sake if you feel like it, and hopefully I will see you next time. Cheers! So as I was mentioning before, the sakura season here in Japan is extremely fleeting, it lasts only a week, sometimes only like two or three days, because it's spring. First of all, you don't know exactly when sakura is gonna blossom. This year it's blossoming just right after the ends of March. The forecast says 16, which is today. It, there was some sakura, but I think in a couple of days they should be even more. Maybe by the 20, 21st, everything is gonna be blossomed. There has been time when it, April 1st it was still freaking cold and there was no sakura yet. So if you book a trip to Japan, be mindful about that. If you arrive late, let's say you arrive the last week of uh, March and you miss the sakura, you can still make up for it by trying to go on the mountains where sakura bloom later or maybe up north if you go toward Hokkaido but then you have to reschedule a bit your trip if you're planning just visiting like most people do just Tokyo and uh, Kyoto then you're not gonna have this chance to catch the sakura if you 
arrive a bit too late. On the other side, if you arrive a bit too early, then you might not catch Sakurai at all. If you're just here a week and you arrive, let's say, on the 20, and by the 27 you're leaving and there is still no Sakura. So it's a bit of a gamble. That's why my suggestion, if you visit Japan only once in your life, is to come between mid of November to mid of December and catch the Momiji season, the red leaves. That period of time it's a lot more easy to catch. It's also extremely beautiful. The weather is fantastic in late November in Tokyo. It's uh, still sunny. Sometimes you can go out just with a t-shirt, maybe a light jacket. It's not cold at all and most likely it's not gonna rain. The second best moment to come is now, which is late March, beginning of April and catch the Sakura. The weather is also nice, you might catch some rain, but if you're able to walk around the Sakura blooming, you might see a lot of beautiful Sakura and the weather is fairly nice too. Even though you're gonna have some big jumps in temperature from like today's 21 degrees Celsius, tomorrow is gonna be maximum 10, so be careful about that. Third favorite time to come to Japan will be Oshogatsu, which is the beginning of the year from January 1st for like the first week, 10 days. At that time, it's the biggest holiday of Japan. The weather is surprisingly nice. It's really dry. You may want to carry a chapstick with you because it's gonna break your lips. But beside that, it almost never rain. Once in five years, you get some snow here in Tokyo, but most likely it's not gonna rain. It's not gonna snow. It's gonna be sunny all the time. It's gonna be a bit windy, but it's gonna be really nice and you get to see all the traditional things that Japanese people do for New Year. And that's nice too. The time absolutely not to come to Japan is from mid of June until end of September. It's just so freaking hot and humid. And when it's not hot and humid, it's raining and hot. So there is no version of this thing where you win. I know lots of people have holidays in the summer, but if you're planning on coming to Japan just once, don't come that time of the year, unless you go directly to Hokkaido or Okinawa. If you go to Okinawa, which is the islands in the Pacific Ocean, you can get some really great beach time if you're lucky, because typhoon are also around. Also, it's extremely expensive. On the other side, if you plan on going to Hokkaido in the summer, it's great. We went uh, two or three years ago. It was a beautiful trip. I guess it's like going to Canada, Alberta. It's beautiful. There's lots of nature. The temperature is not going to be as insane. And even if it's hot, it's not going to be as humid. It's going to be a bit nicer overall. And you're going to have a good time with the nature and uh, going around Hokkaido, which is really big. You have to rent a car, but it's a good trip. It's really nice. So that's my suggestion. Can be possible in late November, late March or early January and never come in the summer. Because Tokyo sucks in the summer.